In this section, we're going to talk about the mean and the standard deviation of the sample mean. In our previous section, we talked about the sampling distribution of X bar, and we defined the sampling distribution of X bar to be the probability distribution of X bar in repeated sampling from a population where we keep the sample size the same and we just keep taking same sam samples of the same size from the population. If you look at a histogram in a way of that uh, random variable at that point, then we're talking about the sampling distribution of X bar. It's the probability distribution of X bar, the sample mean X bar. Now, um, if X bar is a random variable, then it makes sense that we might want to be uh, interested in finding its mean and its deviation, just like any random variable, height, weight, age, GPAs, and so on, except now a random variable is X bar. So in order to illustrate how we're going to find a mean and deviation, I'm going to go back to the example that we looked at in section 7.1. If you recall in this example, we, these are the data that you see here. These numbers are the heights of um, basketball team players um, for some team, the NBA team possibly. And for this, um, for this group of uh, players, we treated them as a population, if you recall. We said there's only five of them. So if you treat them as a population, earlier we found in section 7.1, we found the mean to be mu 80. And this was from section 7.1. Okay, that's from that section. Now, we want to find the standard deviation of these numbers. So to find the standard deviation, this is a formula that we have for standard deviation in highlight right in here. And because we're going to treat these five scores as population, so we actually use the population deviation formula. Now, what I have here is that, generally speaking, we don't know what sigma is. So this is some kind of a hypothetical example we're making up. So going through the formula, um, if I look at the deviation from the mean for each of the scores, and if I square them, so I'm going to get 76 right in here, minus 80 squared. Next score is 78, 78 minus 80 squared. Next one, 79, minus 80 squared, and so on for all five basketball players. And then divided by the sample size, one, two, three, four, five players, and this will yield a score of 3.41 inches. So that would be the standard deviation uh, of the heights for these five players. Okay, so simple um, and straightforward. Now, let's say we want to find the standard deviation of X bar, X bar. Notice this was not X bar. This was just the standard deviation of X. The random variable X is the height, right? This is the random variable X. That's what that is. It's not X bar. It's just X. That is the height. Okay, that's what that is. Now, let's say we take repeated samples of size 2 from that population of 5 players. Now, it's important that our sampling is done without replacement here. What that essentially means is this. Once you select a basketball player, that player does not have a chance of being selected again. It is done without replacement. So, it's impossible for me to have a sample that has player A listed twice or B, or C, or D, or E, for that matter. So in this table 2 from the book, you're going to look at all possible samples of size 2. Now here, because the population was only 5, it's reasonable to do all possible samples of size 2, and it turns out that there is 10 of them. We looked at how this was uh, found theoretically, um, in previous section, again, uh, let me just show you one more time. Uh, in order to find how many samples of size 2 there are, 5 choose 2, which is 5 factorial, 2 factorial, and then 5 minus 3 factorial. I did this in previous section also. And this number, once you work the factorials, this number ends up being 10. That's, that's how many samples there are. There are 10 samples. And you can see these, one, two, three, and so on. 
all the way down to 10. So now let's find the standard deviation of these. Now again, for the standard deviation, you look at individual score. Uh, so you look at 77 here, subtract the mean, and you square it. We're using, in effect, this formula again. The formula that's in highlight, we're using that formula again. So you're going to look at the score x minus the mean, you square it. And we're going to do that for every one of them, for all 10 of these. So the numerator actually has 10 square deviations. And then we're going to divide by 10 because that's how many deviations we have. And this is what I mean by a deviation. 77 minus 80 is a deviation from the mean. There's 10 of them. <clears throat> now, once you carry the arithmetic in the numerator, 77 minus 80, that's going to be 3. 3 squared, 9. That's how you get the first number, 9 here. 77 and a half minus 80, that's going to be negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 squared gives you 6 and a quarter, and so on and so forth, all the way to the last one. Do the arithmetic, and you should get 2.09 inches. So this would be the standard deviation of random variable x bar. Now note something here, let me highlight that for you. This random variable right in here, that's x bar, okay, which is this random variable right here. Okay, now um, let's change this. And oh, one thing we can note, by the way, <coughs> In relation to sigma x, which is what this one is, this score that we found here, this is what sigma for the original random variable x, the height of individual players, turned out to be, which is 3.41 inches. Now, this other deviation that we just found, which is 2.09 inches, notice that this is, compared to that, this is going to be less than uh, sigma of x okay now you're gonna see a trend here actually that's not coincidental uh, so let's continue on with the with another example here we want to do the same thing so I want to find uh, the standard deviation for these group of scores and what happens here now in this example we're looking at all possible samples without replacement of size 4 from 5 of those basketball players a b c d and e so these are all possible samples there's going to be one two three four five of them now how do we calculate um, the uh, sample standard deviation for x bar let me just do the formula here again so this is going to be uh, <clears throat> sigma of x bar again i'm going to do the formula that we saw up there it's going to be 78.5 minus 80 and then we square it and that's the score here and then plus so on and so forth and this would be the next one that's the next 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 the last one is going to be 81 minus 80 squared okay and then we're going to divide all of these by one two three four five samples so we're going to divide it by five okay and I've done the arithmetic, and if I did it right, I got this number to be 0.85. Now, if you note, let's say sigma of x bar here, compare it to, uh, compare this number to the one above. It's even less than 2.09, which is uh, sigma of x bar. Next, we're going to answer this question. So let's say we want to know if, if it's possible to relate the standard deviation of the original random variable x, called that sigma x, to that of the standard deviation of x bar. We call it sigma sub x bar. Okay. So it turns out that, yes, indeed, we can do that. And the way to do it is the following. Now, it's important that what we're doing here is sampling without replacement and from a finite population. A finite population means one that's countable, okay? In the example that we just did, the finite population had only five players in it. And again, we made the assumption that that's the population. So, uh, now this quantity that's right in here, this expression, radical, capital N minus little n over capital N minus 1. 
This expression is called a uh, finite population correction factor. That's what it's called. Or they call it the FPC. Finite population correction factor. That's what that is. Now, uh, and I have here the acronym for it, FPC. So let's use this formula now to find what we already found. Sigma of X bar, that's the standard deviation of the sample sampling distribution of the sample mean. Okay, and uh, to do this, you get Sigma X, which is 3.41. We found all of these earlier. Capital N is 5, little n is 2, so we go through uh, through this formula right in here. And we multiply them, and then use your calculator, you get 2.09. Now this number 2.09 is the same as the one we found up here, right up here. There you go. You see in here, 2.09 inches. So here we actually found it using the data itself, right? But this is using the formula. Now for samples of size 4, all possible samples of size 4, it turns out the same formula gives us uh, this number that is 0.853. Okay, and again this one, we found it earlier, 0.853 is right up here, this number that we see, that's 0.853. Can I just rounded it in my uh, computations up here. So, yes, indeed, this is what the formula is. Now, going forward, we would like to make these formulas as simple as possible. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to find a way to do away with uh, this FPC, the finite population correction factor. We want to do away with this. Now, here is a rule of thumb. The rule of thumb means what works <laughs> uh, in practice. So here's the rule of thumb for... Um, ignoring or discarding the FPC. The rule of thumb says, if sampling is done without replacement from a finite population and both conditions must hold and the sample size is less than or equal to 5% uh, of that, of the population size, then we may ignore the FPC. And that's the going assumption for us. The other thing later on we're going to look at is that um, we're going to assume our populations are infinite, so we don't even have to bother with this finite population dilemma that we have here. That would be in the future chapters, and we'll talk about those later. So, uh, let's now take a look at this one exercise. So, let's see if we can work this one now. In this exercise, and this is in your book, by the way, exercise number 47 in this section. And uh, let's see, in this exercise, we are given, according to this article that's cited up here, according to the article, the mean birth weight of infants at birth is 3,369 grams, which amounts to 7 pounds and 6.5 and ounces with a deviation of 581 grams. So let's do this exercise. In part A of the exercise, the question is asking, um, identify the population and the variable. So let's do this one. In part A, well, according to what I've read up here, our population is going to be all babies born in 1991. Okay, so that's what this is for, our population. is going to be all babies born in 1991. Okay. And uh, let's see. And this is assuming the year that it was on. I'm assuming uh, the year that uh, the study was done is 1991. Okay, and the variable that we are looking at here. If we were given that year, the year of this publication is 1991. Okay, now uh, if the year wasn't given, you simply just say all babies born, and but it's got to be for a specific year. Okay, the variable that we are uh, actually studying here are or is the birth weights. 
and that's gonna be the variable the birth weights of these babies okay and so that's part a in part b the question reads for samples of size 200 find the mean and deviation of all possible sample mean weights so n is 200 here now one thing to note is by the way the mean of random variable x bar will be equal to the mean of x this would be regardless regardless of the sample size so that answer is going to be 33.69 grams okay now the standard deviation however is going to change because the standard deviation depends on uh, what you call it the sample size now for the standard deviation here we're going to assume the population is so large that the ratio let me just put here assume n is less than or equal 0.05 capital n so that means i do not need the fpc so if we can assume that then sigma of x bar is simply sigma over square root of n and here sometimes let me just write this so we know the book uses sigma i use sigma x they're the same thing it's just uh, i like to put the variables down but in the book they use this formula actually right in here okay so the standard deviation is going to be sigma the sigma is given our sigma is 581 grams it's right up here so it's going to be 581 over the square root of 200 which is the sample size and if you do the calculation you should get let's see what did i get for this part i got 41.1 grams and then in part c it's the same exercise i mean they're asking the same thing there you go part c it says repeat part b for samples of size 400 so if we take repeated sample of size 400 from this very large population then again mu of x bar is independent of the sample size is going to be the same as mu of the original variable the mu of x bar here let me just put that mu of x bar this is the mean of sample means some call it mean of means only so that's what mu of x bar is and that's going to be again 3369 grams now standard deviation is going to be different because the denominator is going to change so sigma of x bar is going to be sigma over square root of n drop in the fpc and this time it's 581 over the square root of 400 which is 581 divided by 20 and i got 29 oops sorry 29.1 grams and there you go that's that is what that is okay and there you have it we are done with this section so again to recap all we wanted out of this section um, or this information let me go back here and actually let me finish it by writing it in here so in this section we learned that mu of x bar is equal to mu and uh, uh, sigma of x bar is equal to sigma over root n that's assuming we can drop the fpc so going forward this is what we're going to take with us and that will conclude this section for us